Hello everyone, I'm Kong Chao. Welcome back to my FB Live, the hour before midnight basic accounting. All right, today let, let us explore about cookie jar accounting, uh, which is also known as a cookie jar reserves in the accounting world. Okay, so um, investors pay, typically rely on the accuracy, accuracy and honesty of financial statements um, prepared by companies to, to, in order to help them to make investment choices. Okay, but unfortunately, uh, some company management don't always play by the rules. Okay, so cookie jar accounting is actually a misleading accounting practice um, that corporate executives sometimes employ. All right, how it works is that um, the cookie jar accounting in a, is a is actually an accounting practice uh, used by company to smooth out the volatility in financial results. All right, thus giving an impression to investors that the uh, a misleading impression that it consistently meet earning meet earning targets. Okay, um, this is to make it appear that they have actually achieved performance uh, targets when uh, in actuality they have actually fallen short. Okay, um, I will explain to you two common ways to create a cookie jar. Okay, so uh, the first common one is actually to create a liability that currently doesn't exist. Okay, so uh, this means that you have a practice of recognizing or stating a liability when the company in fact has not uh, incurred the liability at all. So when you created a liability, uh, on the other hand, you actually created an expense in the profit and loss as well. Okay, so so companies will actually record these discretionary expenses when profits are high uh, because they can afford to take a hit to the income. Okay, but when profits are low, the company starts to reduce the liabilities uh, or the provisions that have, they have actually earlier recognized and start to releasing it to the profit and loss as an other income. All right, so that's how they actually uh, try to uh, smoothen out the profits um, year, year on year. All right, uh, by creating a liability upfront when the time is good. Okay, for example, um, in good times, uh, how it works as company executives may say they want to plan or to reorganize or to restructure the company. All right, so the estimated cost for restructuring, restructuring, uh, the estimated to be a uh, to be let's say uh, uh, five hundred thousand. Okay, and when you when you reckon, recognize this. Uh, Pro, the reorganization cost of five hundred thousand. Suppose you have a you have a earnings of one point five million during that year, okay. So and when you say that you announce that you want to restructure a plan, or restructure or reorganize your company, so you will make a provision of five hundred thousand, okay. So as a result, your your profit now has reduced to one million because of the additional provision. Like I say, the provision, the corresponding entry will, the provision is actually in a liability in a balance sheet. The corresponding entry will be an expense in your profit and loss. As a result, your 1.5 million earnings has now dropped to one million. That is uh, on the year when you actually created a high profit. Okay, so when uh, on the following year, for example, when the profit is not so good, and what happens of profit falls to 600,000, for example. So the exec executives of the company may then announce, oh, we have cancelled the restructuring. Therefore, as a result, reversing the liability or the, that they have recognized earlier on in the previous year. And as a result of 500,000 has now, because you reverse li li liability, indirectly it will go through has an other income into your profit and loss. As a result, your, your actual profit of 600,000 will add to this 500,000 task creating uh, earnings of 1.1 million. All right, as compared to 1 million, this year you have 1.1 million. That's how, um, uh, that's how people play around with uh, cookie jars. Okay, so you can see that in this situation, they are actually um, uh, taking cookie, cook, the cookie out from the jar uh, to smoothen out the profit and loss when times are bad. That's why it's called cookie jar accounting. Okay, so this is actually the method of uh, uh, cr what I call creating liability when the li liability does not exist. Yep, that's, that's number one. So the second common way that people use cookie jar is that they you use the, um, the method of having profits from successful quarters that, are, that uh, they do not report those profits so that um, 
they can actually release it uh, when there's a less, less successful uh, profits in the subsequent years. Okay, so how this works is actually they actually create create a false uh, growth curve that is smooth and steady, so to meet the typical up and down earnings. This is very common, or, or this is. Uh, uh, many companies, especially in the IT companies, they try to practice this, all right? Uh, because IT companies typically they rely very heavily on periodic product rollouts. Okay, so when you don't don't have a product on a particular year, your profit may just slack heavily. Okay, so um, there could be some executives trying to uh, manipulate by creating a cookie jar in the in the years that when actually have a huge profit. Okay, so um, one of the best known cases of cookie jar accounting in the recent years is actually Dell Computer. All right, Dell Computer, uh, in which they were penalized $100 million to the, to the to the Securities Exchange Commission in the US uh, because of practicing cookie jar accounting. Okay, so um, how, how, does, how did it work in the Dell Computer is that the cookie jars reserve were created through um, undisclosed payments that Dell received from the chip giant Intel, all right, uh, in return for agreeing to use Intel CPU chip, all right, in a way that uh, to lock out, uh, Intel actually trying to lock out Dell from using their competitor, the chip maker at the point of time was AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. So Intel just says, uh, we'll pay you this X amount, all right, but you should not use AMD into your computers. Okay, and this one huge lump sum that Intel has paid Dell at the point of time, all right, uh, Dell did not actually recognize a whole lump sum payment immediately into the profit and loss. What they did was they actually kept it into a reserve or a provision, all right, or something in the liability form. Um, and this could accounted for almost like 70% of the operating income during that peak when, when Intel pays these special, special payments to Dell. Okay, for for using their Intel chip and not other other competitors. So um, so when when actually the arrangement with Intel actually ended, all right. Uh, what happened is that the profits of Dell fell significantly. Okay, during the time when they actually received the payment, they did not recognize the whole sum. They they actually spread it out over the years. So when Dell was actually suffering some some profits uh, in in their normal operating business, they released some of this liability into into the profits. Okay, so as a result, in the past, Dell Dell uh, profits was was very smoothened over the years until when their arrangement with Intel ended. They have no more reserve to play with, and that's where uh, suddenly this thing blow up. All right, and they start to recognize that there was one huge payment in the past that they did not recognize uh, immediately in the profit and loss, and they use it to actually smoothen the profit and loss over the years. All right, so that's what they call a cookie jar. So when you create a cookie jar, meaning that you have a reserve in there, and any part of time and your profit, you want it to look better, you take out from the cookie, uh, take out from the jar, use the cookie to actually uh, put a better picture into your profit and loss. That's what they call a cookie jar accounting. Oh, hi, Jaden. Thanks for watching. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for summarizing them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And uh, who else is here? Yes. Hi. Thanks, Kaylee, for watching. Um, yeah. So um, when we are investing in a company, um, so how do we actually detect that such things that is happening in any company before we invest in? One of the ways is actually look at such big things as a one-time charges or a special item appearing in the financial statements, all right, in a couple of areas where the, where the company may be manipulating using a cookie jar reserve, okay. Uh, so got to scrutinize the financial statements more clearly, especially there's one big one-time one -time charges. Um, you can see, actually see the income, all right, in the income or actually see in the expense as a provision for such restructuring, for example. It's a big expense. Then you, as an investor, you can actually question them what are what are this restructuring about, or when it's a huge other income being shown rather than the normal profit and loss. Okay, so these are the two ways that people play around with cookie jars, which is actually often they are actually illegal. All right, it's a bad accounting practice and it's often illegal. So uh, because the um, cookie jar accounting misrepresents company's performance, and we should all take it very seriously. All right, I'm not practicing that at all. 
Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Thanks again, Jaden, for summarizing everything. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, so that's all I have for you today. So uh, thank you all for watching again. And please continue with, with your lifelong learning because power is in your knowledge. Goodbye and good night, everyone. Bye-bye.